in Orlando. That was definitely not the offense that I wanted. Dusted, game champ. Oh boy, yeah, we're, we're pretty bad. Good morning, good morning, good morning. We are over here at Colorworks in Bradenton, Georgia, right beside Road Atlanta. I have my really good friend's shop, Andy Duff. He owns a shop there by the name of Colorworks. Tons of cool custom stuff, all body work, full build stuff. Pretty insane shop. This level of uh, quality and finish on stuff is just on another level. Fucking magician of a man when it comes to building uh, stuff that you would never see. I'll, I'll show you some of the cars in this in a few minutes, but we had a steering issue at the last event, which we're 99% sure we found a problem. We are just gonna test, there's a small oak-harding track just across the street called Lanier Raceway. We're gonna go over there, we have a 30 minute session booked there, just gonna do four or five laps just to confirm that the binding issue that we had behind that field in top 32 at the last event is solved, but we're 99% sure we found the issue. So just gone for a quick shakedown, it's Wednesday morning here, and then we have to come back, wash the car, load it up in the rig and then roll down this evening down to Orlando for setup at the track tomorrow. So uh, that's currently what's going on. I'll try my best to film as much as we can. Mark and the rest of the team are flying into Orlando today and uh, myself, Sean, Dustin and Matt are here. Right there thing? Yeah. Right there thing? Yeah. Right there thing, man? That's the genius himself. That's Andy. So this is the track we're at. It's literally half a mile across the street from Andy's shop. So we got to actually drive the comp car over the street because it would take longer to put it on a trailer, strap it all down and drive it over here. But it's the same size bank as Orlando, a little bit steeper banking, but definitely gives us the right characteristics. I know you can't really tell because of all these black and red ballers around the track, but we did set up an Orlando layout in the middle out there and coming along the bank, obviously. Kind of hard to tell from this perspective, but I've uh, driven around it a few times in the truck and have a pretty good idea where we're going. So we're only gonna turn six, eight laps here and uh, that should be good enough to confirm or deny what we're looking for and then stick this thing on the trailer and get the fuck out of here. Start heading south. <laughs> actually has a weird little um, embankment on the entry so I didn't want to play any games with it there a little bit cautious on it but second lap right up on the walls a little bit longer than Orlando so our gear is a fraction off and coming across the infield so there's so many other things going on there with barriers that uh, that your visual reference points are like oh which way the fuck do I go but I'm um, pretty cool happy with it after the first pass I know the steering is fixed um, so that's good it's gonna burn another set of tires give Andy a ride along and uh, get this thing on the trailer and ready to go I don't watch thing dude holy Shit. Fast, isn't it? Bro, that entry right there, <laughs> that's intense. <laughs> it's sick on the wall though. That, that's like, sick. sick. Yeah, yeah. Come on, Dustin. Uh, we'll help you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're safe. You know how you get your like ears your, folded over? Your, your eyeballs are at the left. Yeah. <laughs> we're good. We're holding. Tuck your beard in. Oh yeah. Do I get <laughs> this <laughs> like? <laughs> <laughs> Keep purging it. Keep purging it. But it can't give you too much nitrous install, right? That wasn't a problem no. that we well, had? Well, too much nitrous means it's gonna go lean. Yeah, okay. Do you wanna pull the log? See if you yeah. can see anything? I felt the e-brake pull and then I was just confused why you weren't on power. So yeah, I felt it. <laughs>
successful successful test and problem solved with the steering feel so we found out what it was we hit asbo on our last practice run uh, up in the keyhole and Atlanta. We made wheel-to-wheel -wheel contact on our last lap of practice before top 32. We came in, we checked the toe, we s had a look to see if there's any ironing issues or whatever. It all seemed okay, but uh, after we got out of Atlanta and brought it over here to Andy's shop, the color works, we took it apart and it was actually after banana in the rack. When it was on full load under compression, it was bound up on the inside of the rack. That was why we couldn't see it. So problem solved, car is driving great, feels fantastic. We killed some GTs in the making of it, but uh, yeah, pretty happy for the most part. Now we're just gonna give the car one last um, tear down, one up and ball check, take about an hour. Feel like we have a prep car. Sean, you look very vulnerable there. Matt looks like he's uh, become a plumber overnight. No, it's been there. Uh, we stole Matthew back from Powers' team. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> come on, Matt, it's on camera. Come on, man, you gotta come out of that checkbook, baby. <laughs> Everybody always looking to get paid. I don't know what it is with these guys. Just gonna rip the body off pressure wash and then get out of here i'll try vlogs on the way down the road and stuff show you life on the road in the big rig how exciting it gets 55 mile an hour hopefully we're gonna have no tire blowouts let's go then andy i love you bud i love you back thank you very much brother from another mother on the east coast yes right on let's go i gotta get a shot of it driving out Ready to road trip. I can never get the shot of this thing driving out. So much easier when Mark's here. He can do this kind of stuff and I don't have to think about it. But Mark decided that he'd be an airplane princess and just fly straight into Orlando. Cheers, Mark. Appreciate that, bud. Anyways, it's time to get on the road with the boys. Get some miles covered. 600 miles down south tonight. Oh, Sean. Hi. Why are you <laughs> lying on the ground? Uh, I was keeping your seat free. Oh, thanks. Gotta close the curtains there, boys. Don't wanna look at you. Are you just gonna enjoy the AC back there? Just wake me up when we get there. I don't know what we got. Ah. Ready to move out? Is there, yeah, sure, one of them. Hey, if anyone does uh, apartment remodeling or whatever and wants to take on a project of remodeling the inside of the toter, I wouldn't be mad at you. No problem. It's fucking super cool that truck stop way. It's free to feel, isn't it? Uh, yeah, free. Sometimes I think we don't appreciate the amount of work that goes into doing uh, these Formula Drift events. It is literally like a massive circus of like nearly 70 teams between pro and pro spec that commute from all around the country and actually all around the world to converge on a city or a town for a weekend and everyone to turn 15, 16 or 20 laps maybe. But there's so much work and operation that goes into actually doing these things that the driving is literally like the last two or three percent. Everything else is like the transport, logistics, people flying, renting cars, hotels, organizing their time off work if they're not full time and only weekend warriors and stuff. There's so, so, so fucking much. And I'm just very grateful to be in a situation in my life that we do get to actually do this as a career. It's only every now and then and we're on the road and we're in like big ass truck stops actually like this that I get the opportunity to be like, fuck, like every one of these other guys is here. Like they're probably hauling like toilet paper or bread or cattle or beef or something. And there's a couple of guys in a in another semi truck that are uh, hauling race cars on the way to a race event, living out my childhood dream, which I'm very, very fortunate for. And I uh, want to thank all you guys for uh, following along and enjoying the ride. And even if the comments are hateful, sometimes they're positive or whatever, um, having everyone engaged and getting their opinions, honestly, is, is massively important. And even if the comments are negative, it gives us things that uh, we can choose if we actually want to work on them from, uh, from a fan's perspective or not. But just take one of those moments that I've actually been grateful like this is a fucking job if you ask me what I've been doing this 20 years ago yes I always dreamed big and I always would have told myself yes but uh, the actual reality of thinking if it was gonna come through was always a small uh, percentage anyway we'll keep trucking on that was cheap man that's not 1400 it's 140 let's keep it like that yeah boys doing big trucking stuff it's funny that you fly the truck driver out and then leave the truck driver in the bathroom to drive your truck. To be honest, he might get left behind if he's any fucking lander. I'm gonna stop with the dialogue. Marco always says I don't give enough dialogue and don't explain what we're doing. Now I tried to explain and I think I probably over explained that no one's really gonna give a fuck and they're probably gonna click off the video. Now Mark's gonna cut this piece so it's not really gonna matter. But anyway. I don't know, it's Dustin. Dustin? Thanks for picking us up. You're welcome. Thank you, Tony. It's only like four in the morning. 
It's all right in the morning. Hey, Rachel. What's up? You don't know what the fuck Rachel was trying to do back there? <laughs> you went back there. Wow. We're here. We made it. See you in the morning, Matthew. Thank you. Go back to the house, get some sleep. You wouldn't be very good at cracking safes, would you? Hey, yup. Hey, yep. Hello, Hello, girl. Good morning. Well, I'm better than you at the other camera. I film so much, you're gonna be pissed. It's like, fuck him, yeah, oh, I gotta fix that one. Yeah. I got stuck at one point and I hit it on the ground a few times and it turned off and then I came back on. So it might not be in the right sound. Form Drift Round Tree. They changed the course actually. We've ran the same course here for the last, I think we're coming here eight years and they made a change on the course. So it's basically the old Form Drift New Jersey Waltz ADM track. Fucking track I love. Wait, so, so it's a figure eight? It's not a figure eight now. So you go around the bank, then you transition past an inner clip and you run the inside of the, the opposing bank and then you cross back across the track. So it's like it's about 300 yards longer than it was before. So All the boys are track setting up. I have to collect Emmett. Emmett's back for the summer. He's on his college break school in Ireland so he's coming out for the summer and I have to pick Brian. Have any ever heard of this Alexi chocolate? I'll uh, attach your shipping address at the end of this video and feel free to ship as much as you want. I'm playing very much. Hey you were with us the year that we done all the jumps here. Yes. So yes. we had Dan Summer in the back of the car. Dan Summer, Danger Dan. Myself and Prime were racing the two rental cars down here, but like I'll show you the whoops that are in it. We were hitting them in a at fucking like 80 mile an hour, like like all the way along. And the rental car was full of the two up for and Dan was in the trunk of one of them. <laughs> and there was a load of beer in there, like loads of bottles of beer. And he smashed every one of them with his body. Like he was hitting the roof. <laughs> oh my god. It was god. fucking hilarious. I never forget it. It's pretty wild when you start hitting them fast. C4849. Just at the airport collecting ammo, coming over to us for a few months to get stuck in with the team. Oh, and there I see a James Dean in the wild as well. James Dean! Big fan! <laughs> How are you, bud? Typical Irish, just blocked the whole airport. <laughs> the whole place. Good to Good see, see you, what's going on? Look at that fucking fur vlog. Oh, man. I see that. Jesus Christ. Fucking, I wouldn't know what to I do with it. I still use an iPhone too. All right, lad, in you go. <laughs> <laughs> What's get your out, problem? Get out of the way, Dean. No, I gotta be first. Uh, Fucking hold up the whole place. What's going on? How are you? Good. Good to see you. There's your camera. So Better get used to it. How's the flight? How the snooze that was grand? But good to have you back, bud. Unreal, good to be back. Ready to do some work? It's a nine hour flight with you, and these pair of prints I, show up. I, and I'm having a fucking What a heart bad attack. place to meet you. <laughs> I saw you, I'm like, oh, a rental car grab for you at least. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder can I pass him? I'd say I can get around him. You explain to Andy Luke why you're not at the fucking race because you're already getting the police station. <laughs> 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 this is on my car this time, so fuck off. Oh, I'm definitely hitting that! <laughs> the caveat is I don't know where we're going. Oh, there's the Chick fil A. It's grand. It's grand. Hey! Shut the fuck up! <laughs> Stop. I'm not with him. I'm not with him. I'm just gonna get out of here, alright? In Orlando, the weather is so fucking changeable here all the time. Um, it was sunny about 11 minutes ago, and now it is starting to rain, but we're best start practice. Really excited to get actually back in the car. You didn't have Starbucks without me today, can you believe that? Actually. Every vlog, out of all the coffee actually, you slapped out of my hand. Actually, your girlfriend bought me this. <laughs> Darlene bought it. Your girlfriend delivered it to me. That's fucked. So we're just watching everyone else, seeing how the track conditions are changing and hoping that we don't get a sprinkle of rain in the next 
15 minutes. But it's a moody ass sky out there at the moment. This place, oh, we've had some of the craziest events here. Like last year, it was crazy thunder and lightning. They had to evacuate all the fans out of the grandstands because all the grandstands are living. Yeah. There was no fans left from like well, top eight yeah. onwards. It was fucking crazy here. And it was like some of the heaviest rain I've ever, ever, ever seen. Well, yeah, we're good. We're ready to go. Here we go, Dean Carnage Carney with the K. Carnage initiates into the bank. Needs to get a little bit higher there, and he does just that. Nice, clean, black dot Viper. Looking mean, menacing. That Type S lights underneath. Past that second inside clip. Looks like he's now really hammering down. Finds that crease, puts it right in there. Signed, sealed, delivered. Inside clip as he gets to the final outside zone. A very smoky run. Super powerful car that maybe a handful of people in the world can actually drive and take control of. Dean being one of them. He's kind of become synonymous with this vehicle over the years. And at moments, it, he's almost looked unstoppable. But there are other times where it's very difficult to get the car to do what he wants it to do and to be able to show the skill that he has as a driver. I think this will definitely be most likely a keeper run, but probably not the best that we're going to see from Dean this weekend. Let's see where he lands. And there it is, 78. So 78 there for Dean Carnage Carney. As you can see, X Factor is zero. So it lands the average of 78, puts him into 10th position, hypernft.io. So there's the last chance qualifier. There used to be two qualifying laps for everyone. Now there's only a second chance qualifier for people who don't score high enough, basically. They only pick the best eight out of however many people. So that there's a 32 car bracket. So if there's 42 cars that come out, anyone below 24 gets to re-qualify up to 32. So now we're driving again, to get our second chance. Viper. Looks a lot more concise this run. Doesn't doesn't look as kind of like, all right, I'm gonna throw it all out there. It looks looks a little more precision here. Still aggressive. Definitely an aggressive line. Look at that. You know, I, I say not aggressive, obviously the driving, but just by comparison, that was that was a really, really good run there from Dean Carnage Carney. Yeah, he seemed, you know, very centered and balanced, but as you said, still bringing that aggressiveness that you want to see to try and maximize the most amount of points that you can extract out of these judges for the criteria that they've laid down in qualifying. And Dean seemed to do just that. No major mistakes that I could see. Pretty good initiation, gets right back on throttle. Mid-high line throughout the majority of the bank. Just starts dripping down a little bit there towards the end. Hits that inside clip. Nice job on IC2. And then outside zone two, very consistent. Just a little bit of movement there from the la on the last third of that outside zone. But overall, I think this is going to be up there uh, with Gucci and Higa. And uh, this should be enough to get him in the show. 76.33. 76.33 for Dean Carnage. Oh, yeah. We're still in, but dude, what, what the fuck? After cushion at the wall of like three feet. Yeah. Um, but apart from that, I thought it was on the money fucking everywhere. But the only thing is you hit inner one. Hitting inner one is like two points. So that was definitely not the qualifying session I wanted. Um, or I don't think it's a good reflection on how we drove all day today. I was really, really happy with our chase driving. We focused almost all of our energy during practice on the chase driving. Um, and then came back and uh, done a couple of lead laps, like maybe two or three, that I was very happy with. But uh, the first run, uh, we misjudged the track um, when it was going from daytime into nighttime. Um, and I was too tight on the first outer bank, which kind of kept us off the wall about four feet. Um, so we got a low score of 78, which to be honest is pretty accurate. Uh, that put us in the bottom eight. So it was 12, 13 drivers fighting for the last eight spot. And uh, we done a much better run this second time around. Like I was much more happy with it. I um, scored a lower score, that was 73.66, which uh, I still don't
don't understand. I've watched the run probably 10 or 12 times now, but it is what it is. We got in in 30 second spot. I think it's my first time ever qualifying in 30 second. Bit of an uphill battle for tomorrow. We have number one qualifier, Ryan Turk, in our first battle. We're also the first battle of the top 32, which I particularly enjoy because when you come out of practice, the car is still hot, you're still mentally hot, and you're actually turned on and ready to go. So I'm not mad about that, but uh, I am definitely disappointed in the qualifying score. And uh, hopefully we can turn what's after, what started as a really enjoyable weekend to pretty dismal. Hopefully now we can have a bounce back and uh, take it a good few rounds tomorrow. And we're just here now doing a re-prep on the car. So the transmission rebuild, because I done a donkey shift into third gear. Completely my fault, but um, yeah kind of hard to have uh, good energy right now. Mark's acting like he knows what he's doing. But, um, uh, I loved your donkey shift. Yeah, my donkey shift kind of sucks, so I gave the boys a decent amount of work tonight. Mark wasn't gonna any dialogue, so I figured I'd get it. I got it all. I talked about it all. Sorry, I was eating a boiled burger. Boi oh. Boiled? Stop. I'm unhappy. Oh, is this your playlist? I wouldn't say playlist. Cardi B? What do we got there? <laughs> we, what, uh, what's going on there? He was playing that on repeat when he came home a few weeks ago. <laughs> You're so full of shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my windows down. Oh, I'm having Taylor Dunn back. Fucking motor swapping Taylor Dunn. Come on, boys. Fucking much better day today. Yeah, it is. Like, actually normal weather. The track's just super greasy. It's funny how much it changes from night to day and stuff, you know? Thanks, Mark. No worries. we do this that's why we have all the hardship and the sleepless nights is about actually enjoying it so it's quite fun today <laughs> so here we go, Ryan Turk, Rainex, Toyota, GR Corolla on Ditto tires. The race service boys watching for Monaco, throws it into that first outside zone, high on the bank. Here comes Dean Carnage Carney. Look at that, applying the pressure. There goes Dean Carney in that hyper energy dot IO Dodge Viper. Now in that transition, in that second inside clip, really tight is Ryan Turk. Now going to that second outside zone, Ryan Turk does exceed it a little bit. Dean goes way long on that second outside zone. Looks like he was uh, struggling to catch up to him, and the Viper was trying to drop the fangs in the backside of the Corolla. Let's look at it again. We're gonna need some aerial shots here, Jared, because that smoke is so thick. Looking at outside zone one, they're both doing a great job here. Dean's in the pocket, he's getting his car positioned properly as they come down off the bank. Not too bad on inside clip one. Dean's doing a good job there, but goes wide on inside clip two. Drops two, potentially three tires off the course. We'll have to have a closer look there. Turk. Completes the course. Uh, Dean does get back online, uh, but is going to have that off track excursion to contend with here. As we look at the uh, super fast drone and the chase here, let's see exactly how far off. Ooh. Yeah, that could have been three. I'll have to have a, a look at the replay from. Uh, you know, Sean Adriano has a, a real nice replay system. Over yeah, we have, a complex, we have a complex kind of multi-screen screen that has all the different angles. So, Ryan, I'll kind of let you discuss with your other judges. But what, what Ryan was elaborating there is if, you're, if it's your first time, three tires off, would deem it incomplete, not being impeded by that lead driver. So, Ryan Turk 
was tight to those inside clips. Uh, I, as you said, Dean was in the pocket, didn't mimic the exact angle of Ryan Turk, but that's difficult, man. You know, you got to think about the short, the short GR Corolla compared to this long Dodge Viper. So aesthetically, it definitely looks different. Oh, Dean Carney throws it in. Ryan Turk, a little bit of correction there. So looks like they're mimicking kind of the same line. Ryan Turk throws it high on the bank. Now Dean Carney dropping into that inside clip. Looks like Dean does throw it a little bit wide. Now Ryan Turk reels him back in. Looks like he might be trying to play it a little bit safe here. Not throwing caution to the winner, the Corolla side of the Dodge Viper. All right, so let's take a look at it again here. On that first initial bank, it looked like they kind of had similar lines by comparison. Lead versus lead, chase versus chase. So what we're seeing here is a lot of chase drivers. This is what's happening in practice going off from inside clip two. They're not able to follow, but you see Dean Carney coming off a little bit early there, a little bit off of inside clip one, and this is where Turk's going to attack. Dean's off of inside clip two a little bit. Turk's following him. Dean's inside a little bit on outside zone two uh, initially and then pushes the car out wide. And Dean Carney, you know, had some had some instances there. So let's take a look. Slide him left for Turk, right for Dean Carnage. Carney, Ryan Latane, one of our judges and co-announcer here, says, and all of them do. Ryan Turk gets the win. Unfortunately, Dean Carnage Carney, HyperNFT.io, an early retirement for him. Do you agree with the judge's decision? I don't know. I'm watching the run right now. I think we left out at one too early, that's why we lost the front end. Could have been one more time, but had to pick, I picked third. Yeah, I would. It's the end of our weekend, but like, as much as it sucks, I'd way rather go out like that than have it went down the lap. Like, we just need to find more drive in the car. Kirk's on the big boy, fire is about a 3 3 five. You can see across the middle actually where it makes a difference, like, you know what I mean? Unfortunately, have a shit qualifying. You set yourself up for a very tough day. No point in crying over it. Let's uh, get focused on the next one. That's all we can do. What's he checking for? A loose change. <laughs> Did he show you the oil filter already? You don't want to see it, it's real bad. Now we're just trying to figure out where it's coming from. Do you remember seeing it last time? Yes I do, and I see, oh, this is way more glittery. Oh boy. You see how it's like actually just silver? Oh boy. Yeah, it's like on a scale of one to fucked. Yeah, we're, we're pretty bad. So now we're just trying to figure out where it's coming from. Whether it be the cam itself, the cam journal, which is the block. The problem with it being like the journal is it's the block. So there's no like fix around it other than to like machine it bigger and then add sleeves. It's a V10, so you have to do that for a long ways. So I don't know what the fix is for that. I'm not like the engine builder. I'm not the specialist on that shit. So if we can't see anything on the cam, then we know it's a block. So then we'll get to have to put this in. Dusted. Camshaft. Base circles back here, it's coming up and it's just eating, eating the camshaft up. So we got a problem with our wheel piece. Ha <laughs> ha